Have you ever seen those little dollar signs that are floating around in Excel around your cell number? There's like a dollar sign A, dollar sign one. And you're like, what in the world? Where do these come from? What do they mean? Well, let's talk about it. We're gonna hop over into Excel and I'm gonna show you exactly how you can set that up, why you want that, you can do it partially, and all of those fun things that you need to know about self-referencing. I'm Allison Gonzalez, a Microsoft Certified Trainer here at Pragmatic Works, back with another Excel basic for you. When you're in Excel and you are staring at your spreadsheet and you have a formula and you wrote it and it's working and it's great for one row, but you want to have that one formula that you set up in that cell work for that entire column, well, what do you do? Easiest way, you drag it down or do flash fill. But when you do that, you need to understand how that cell is being referenced. And so when we are talking about cell referencing in Excel, when you are essentially copy and pasting a formula from one cell into another, how does Excel understand that? How do they know when you want information to change or when you want some of that information to maybe stay locked in place. Maybe there's a certain element that's in one cell that you always want to reference, but the other ones you want to change by row. How are we going to set that up? So that's what we're going to talk about and I'm going to show you and it is so easy once you understand the process. So with the cell referencing, first off, we have relative referencing. This is your default. This is a basic. Most times everything when you're doing everything in Excel is going to be like this unless you specifically change something. So what that is, you can see we have A1, so it's your column row reference. And that means if you pull that over, you drag that down, it is going to change. So if you're starting in A1 and you pull that down, well, then you're going to have B1. Or if you pull it over, you would have A2. As you move the formula from one cell to another, everything about that will adjust. Now we got our dollar signs. This is our absolute referencing. This is where things stay locked in place. So if I want it to look at and understand and only keep track of one specific column and row, and maybe add some things onto that, change that as I'm moving cell by cell, that is an absolute reference. You can also do a mix. So we can have the column that A be relative and the row with the dollar sign be absolute. So the column is adjusting, but the row is staying in place or reversed. You can have the column be absolute, but the row change. So these are all of the situations that you are going to see for cell referencing. These are all of the setups you're going to see. Relative with no dollar signs, absolute, which is fully locked in place with that dollar sign before the column and before the row, or a mix where you're going to see it in front of either the column or the row. So that absolute reference that is keeping it consistent and it is super easy to do. It is the F4 key on your keyboard is a shortcut to do this or to get the mixed one. So let's go into Excel and take a look at that. All right, so we can see right here we have in E2, I am summing up these three columns. So I can see I want B2, C2, and D2. And I want the sum of all three of these. And that is what I'm getting here. Now, notice we don't have any dollar signs there. So when I take and copy and paste this or pull it down or do flash fill, what is going to happen? If I pull that all the way down. We can see that number is adjusting. And if I click into any of these, I can see that is fully adjusted. So now... I am on the eighth row, so that has adjusted B8 and D8. Over here, I'm on the 17th row, so it's B17, D17. 
this isn't locked down. So as much as I want to pull this over and copy it somewhere else, it is going to change and adjust. Now, what stays the same? The actual formula, the saying, hey, I want to sum up these three columns. But the formula is adjusting based on its location. So it's still doing the same thing, but is adjusting based on location. Now, let's say, for instance, that I did want to make part of this absolute. Maybe we're going to do something different with this later on, but I need this to say, hey, this is going to be the product cost I want all of the other things added up to be. Well, what we would want to do is we would want to make part of this, or you could do all of it, absolute. Now, to do that, all you need to do is select the cells that you want to change. So all I have to do is highlight that cell right up here. I can do both of these at the same time, or I could do one of them at a time. Up to you, depends on what you need to do. But I've highlighted both of them, and I'm gonna push the F4 key on my keyboard. So when I push the F4 key, you can see it immediately is giving me these dollar signs. So we can see that as I push that, it is now locked this down. So it has locked in place the column and the row for each of these situations. So if I kept that, and let's pull that down so we can copy that over, you can see it's going to give me the exact same thing. Because now it does not care what row it's in. It doesn't care that it's on row 20. I locked that in place and it is only going to look at what is pulling from the B2, C2, and D2 cells. So I fully locked that in place and it is going to not change a single thing no matter where on the spreadsheet I put it. Now, if we only want part of this to adjust, then we can again highlight those all or part of it. You can do either one. And I'm going to again hit that F4 key. And so you can see that will just let me cycle through my options of referencing this, either a relative reference, an absolute reference, or a mixed reference. And you can see with the mixed reference, first we can see we have the dollar sign on the row, and then it switches to the dollar sign on the column. So all you have to do is hit that F4 key and it cycles through all of your options. So you get the one that you want to have. So let's say we're going to lock in place the row. So I've locked in place the row, but I've adjusted the column. Now you'll see when we do this. So for this one, it doesn't really matter that we've pulled it all the way down. You can see we've copy and pasted it into those other cells, but because we are keeping this row the same for all of them, it's giving us the same information. So this may be, the setup that you need for some formulas. For ours, the data we have right now, it's gonna not change anything. Essentially, it's like having an absolute for this data set. Now, you'll see though, when we switch that over, hit F4 again, we're gonna now have our columns locked in place. And bring that down. We can see that is fully adjusting. And now it is looking at and keeping it in line. So it's looking at B3, D3, B3, C3, and D3. So we can see it has kept those all locked in place. Because what's gonna happen is if I move this over somewhere, I want to make sure that it is going to retain those numbers. So you can see it is still looking at B3 and D3. It's still looking at B3 and D3. It's still looking at B3 and D3, no matter which row I, no matter which column I'm looking at. Now, let me go back and we're gonna switch this one to this change. And we can see the difference between it now. So now if I pull this formula over and copy and paste it, you can see that this went from first looking at B2, C2, and D2. Now when I'm over here, I'm looking at C2, D2, and E2. 
and I move it to G. Now let's move it again, and I'm on D, E, and F, and so on. Each one I move down is going to look at the three prior to it. So that's why you need to pay attention to, hey, do I need to keep my columns locked in place, or do I need to keep my rows locked in place? Because what you're going to be referencing, you can see those columns stay the same versus those columns adjusting here, it is going to matter. So as you're learning and working with Excel formulas and as you're learning your absolute and relative referencing, it's really important to understand what direction are you moving this formula? Where are you copy and pasting it? Are you going up? Are you going down? Are you going across? Where are you going that you will need to lock in place? Starting off, it's definitely a lot easier to go full on and have this all the way locked in place, having that full absolute reference where everything is locked in place and nothing is going to change. Most of the time you're going to be in a situation where you are going to have to have only part of that locked down. So you can see I can even go over and highlight just one element of that, again, F4, and change that. So play around with this, get a spreadsheet, move your formulas around, lock parts of them down, see what changes and what doesn't, so you are comfortable working with absolute and relative references. This so, is so important to know when you're working in Excel, is a vital part of how formulas work. And if you're going to be a pro at Excel, you need to spend a little bit of time practicing and understanding your absolute and relative references. Leave a comment below if this is something that is totally new to you and you're excited to put this into practice, or if you have other tips and tricks about this that you could put into play. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel. That way you'll be able to see all the videos as they come out. All the videos here on the Pragmatic Works channel are about all the topics on the Power Platform, not just Excel. So you learn about Power BI, Teams, Power Apps, and much more. Also, you can sign up to take hours and hours of Excel training over on our on-demand learning platform, and I will have that linked for you below. So happy learning, and I will see you in my next video.